Hello and welcome back to our introduction to supported decision making. I'm Jonathan Martinez. I'm the Senior Director for Law and Policy at the Burton Blatt Institute of Syracuse University. In this session, we are going to talk about guardianship, what it is and the effect it can have on people's lives. Guardianship is not new. It actually goes back to the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. You see, 2,000 years ago, if the Romans thought you were feeble-minded, in their words, they would put a curator over you to make decisions for you. In the Middle Ages in Britain, if you were an idiot or a lunatic, and apparently they thought there was a difference, they would put a committee over you to make decisions for you. Here in America, we call it guardianship. You see, guardianship's a legal process. Every state has its own law. Minnesota has its own guardianship law. But what every state's law essentially comes down to is this. If a judge thinks that you cannot make decisions, they give your right to make choices, some or all of those choices, to someone else. For all intents and purposes, that person becomes you, makes decisions instead of you. And the most common type of guardianship, up to 90%, according to one study, are called full or plenary guardianships, where every single right you have is given to someone else. One law professor I know calls a plenary guardianship a civil death, where you become an un- person because every right you have goes to someone else. You cannot interact with society except through that other person. So in the eyes of the law, you don't exist. And as a result, what the studies have shown is that guardians have incredible power over people's lives, especially plenary guardianships. One study said that guardians have the power to make even the most basic and intimate decisions in a person's life, everything from where they live to what they do to whether they get married. And we've known for 40 years that self-determination is a good thing. We've known that losing the right to make choices is a bad thing. People who are denied self-determination, according to one paper, often feel, quote, helpless, hopeless, and self-critical. They will not, quote, behave because they see no point in behaving. That's not very surprising, is it? If I told you time and time again that you can't do something, would you feel particularly interested in trying to do it? Another, per another one's found that people who lose their self-determination have low self-esteem, passivity, and it hurts their ability to function even in the most basic ways. And again, that's not surprising. If your right to make choices and interact with society was taken away from you, would you want to try? And we've known that's a problem. Congress has known that's a problem. On your screen is a quote from Congressman Claude Pepper of the Select Committee on Aging. And this quote was 1987, almost 30 years ago. What he said then after investigating guardianship was that the typical ward has fewer rights than the typical convicted felon. That when people are under plenary guardianship, or what I call overbroad or undue guardianships, that's guardianships on people who don't need them or who don't need them to the extent that they're under them, the guardian has the power to choose so many things for that person. What they do, where they live, what kind of medical treatment they get, or even if they get medical treatment. And in Congressman Pepper's words, in rare occasions, even when they die. As he said, it is, quote, in one short sentence, the most punitive civil penalty that can be levied against an American citizen, except, of course, for the death penalty. So where do we go from here? I'm not here to tell you that there should never be a guardianship. I'm not here to say that if you are a guardian, you're evil or you're wrong, or if you're thinking about seeking a guardianship, you're doing the wrong thing. I will tell you right here and right now, sometimes people do need someone to help them make decisions or to make decisions for them. So absolutely, there are times when guardianship is perfectly appropriate. But what I am here to tell you and what we will discuss in the rest of this series are, are other options that we should think about guardianship before we jump into it, that we should not reflexively seek guardianship as we have the last 2,000 years. And thank you for joining us for this session. In the next session, we're going to talk about other options and other ways that we can help people make decisions without taking away their right to make choices. Thank you for joining us.